30 3D printing hacks in 30 days. For today's 3D printing hack, we'll be looking to improve your support game with tree branch supports. And to do that, we'll be going to the Cura settings and searching for support structure, and then make sure that these two settings are selected. To demonstrate this feature, we'll be looking at this hollow tube lying on its side. First, we'll go ahead and slice this part just using normal support structure and see how that looks. And speaking from experience, this is going to be a really painful part to get the support structure out of. Now let's enable the tree branch support structure and take a look at this print again. Now this support structure is going to be really easy to take out of there. And not only will it be easier to depanel, but we're going to save some time on the print as well, so that's a double win. And like I said, removing the support material is so easy. Oh no, the dreaded part curl. I should have cleaned my bed. I should have used a raft. I shouldn't print in the AC with that cold draft. But now it's too late. There's nothing I can do. The part has failed, and it looks like poo. This is always a scary situation to be in, especially if you have a big print going. But there's one act of desperation I found you can do to save a part mid-print. That's right, if you see your part start to curl mid-print, you can sneak in there with a glue gun and glue that end down, bring it back to safety. Now it's not the most glamorous trick, but this can really help save you when you're in a bind. Do you have a broken 3D print that you want to fix instead of throwing away? It's not going to be pretty, but actually you can use a soldering iron to melt the print back together. You can even use an extra purge line from your 3D printer as some filler material. To avoid discoloring of your print, keep the soldering iron below 230 degrees for PLA. Also, don't use a dirty tip like me. And now we can get some more use out of this print. For today's 3D printing hack, we're going to be looking at printing this mesh fabric, which is super awesome and always amazes people every time I show them. So printing this mesh fabric is pretty easy. You don't need any special filaments, and there's a bunch of models you can find on Printables or Thingiverse. I put some links in the description down below. For your first time to print this, I'd recommend printing out a little bit smaller sample like we have here, just to make sure everything's okay. Then once you're happy with the printer settings and the quality, you can step it up to some bigger pieces of fabric just like this one, and you can really have some fun. So I'd encourage you to go out and find some designs that you like and start printing your own 3D printed flexible fabric. Today's 3D printing hack will be another one to increase printing speed. And today we'll be looking specifically at line width. So even if you haven't purchased a larger printing nozzle, you can use this little setting to trick your printer into thinking that you do have a larger nozzle. Now we can see that in action here on this 3D printed mesh. With the standard line width, it takes three perimeters to complete each layer. And after we've updated the line width to 0.6 millimeters, it only takes two perimeters to complete each layer. So we can save a ton of time. And a couple words of caution on increasing your line width. You typically shouldn't go over 150% of your nozzle diameter, or you may run into issues with under extrusion. Also, increasing your line width may cause you to miss out on some very thin wall sections if you have those within your model, so make sure to double check that. Now with the warnings out of the way, enjoy your increased printing speed. For today's hack, we'll be printing in vase mode. So to do this, we'll import a vase that will look like a solid model. In the Kira settings, we'll search for Spiralize Outer Contour. No wonder everybody calls it vase mode. Now with this option checked, you can see Kira will print the base of your model and a single outside wall that will spiral all the way to the top and leaving the top open. The cool thing about vase mode is you can print objects super fast. I printed this cup here in just one hour. And in case you're wondering, this model does hold water, but not all models will. It depends on the geometry and the print quality. For today's 3D printing hack, we'll be looking at using larger nozzles in our prints. First, we'll be installing a 0.8mm nozzle into our printing head. We'll preheat the printing head to 240 degrees so that can come out easily. And then we'll install the new nozzle just snug with the printing head still heated up from before. After that, you'll have to adjust the settings in your slicing software, and then you can slice a new model for a test print. I'm going to print a Benchy here. And we can see here on the Benchy, some of the quality and details really took a hit. So it's probably not the best thing to print with a larger nozzle. For the second print here, let's print out this nice cup using vase mode. Now this new cup printed in just 22 minutes, which is lightning fast. And it is a lot stronger than the original one with these thicker walls. So I'd say that's one of my favorite advantages of a larger nozzle is speed printing in vase mode. Leave a comment down below of what you like to print when using larger nozzles. Seam placement is one of the often overlooked aspects of 3D printing. 
and with just a little bit of time you're often able to tuck that seam somewhere out of sight. The seam I'm referring to is on the outer layer where the printing head starts and stops and leaves a little bit of an imperfection on each layer. And now to better control our seam we're going to go to the settings and we're going to search seam and then we're going to select these options here. Now we have a few options under Z seam alignment that we can choose. One of them is random. I'm not a big fan of this one because I think it looks a little bit messy. I usually prefer user specified which will stack all the seams on top of each other in one location and then you can specify which corner of the print that you prefer that to be. And if you have a print where you want to get the seam in a very specific location you can always specify the X and Y coordinates of that seam. It's a little bit tricky but you can usually get the job done. And that's it today for seam management. So we've looked at some hacks to help the top sides of our prints. Now let's look at some hacks for the bottom sides of our prints. The biggest change I've made in this area is using a flexible PEI sheet as my bed. Now this flexible PEI sheet has a couple main advantages. One, it makes it super easy to take parts off the bed. All you have to do is flex this sheet and the parts peel right off. And two, if you look close, this sheet has a nice texture to it. So when you squish your first layer down properly, you get a really nice surface finish. You can compare that here between these two bottle openers. And with the surface finish, if you get the part in the right light, you can even see the surface sparkle. Today, we're going to be learning how to save some time within the Cura slicing software by learning some hotkeys. So the first basic hotkeys we're going to learn today are T, S, R, M. T is for translate, to move an object around. S is for scale, so we can scale the size of an object. R is for rotate, so we can move the object around different axes. And then M is for mirror, so we can mirror the object in different directions. Now stepping up a little bit in complexity, you can select an object and press Ctrl M to multiply the object several times. Now with all these extra objects that you've multiplied, you can press Ctrl R to rearrange the build plate and make everything neat and tidy. Now if you want to move all these objects somewhere on your bed, you can press Ctrl A to select all objects and then you can move them all together. And finally, when you realize you don't want to print this mess of stuff, you can press Ctrl D to clear your build plate. Today we have another bottom side printing hack. So this one applies to designing parts that you want to 3D print. When we're in CAD, we love to put rounds on things, because rounds are smooth, they look nice, and, well, they're round. But when it comes to 3D printing, actually our 3D printers don't like to put rounds on things, especially on the bottom side. And this is due to the nature of the round and our printer not liking overhang angles over 45 degrees. So with a round, you will always have overhang angles greater than 45 degrees. And so, there's a simple solution for this. I would recommend a 45 degree chamfer instead. Now a chamfer doesn't have the same look and feel as a round, but if you design it like this, you will get more consistent print quality. Now we can see in the slicer software that the chamfer cube doesn't have any areas that recommend supports. Looking at the final result, we can see the rounded cube has some sloppy layers that look like they're falling apart, and the chamfer cube looks a lot better. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own custom 3D models without using any complicated CAD software. So the first way is to go to nametag-designer.com. Here you can type whatever custom text you want into a name tag, and you can change the font as well as the border styles as well. And then you can download the free STL file to print on your own. And a second way to make your own custom 3D models, believe it or not, you can just open images right into Kira. When you open an image into Kira, it will transfer it into a 3D file, and you can actually print these out as lithophanes. And these lithophane pictures will look pretty ordinary until you hold them up to the light and the image transforms. I have a video that goes over the basics on how to 3D print lithophanes, so if you're interested in that, I'll put the link in the description below. Today we're going to be 3D printing the hairy lion. So when we first pull this into the slicer, it looks a little bit strange, but as we pull the layers down, we can see what's really going on here. This outer shell is really there to support all the hairs that are sitting in midair. Make sure to turn supports off for this print, because those hairs will be printed as a bridge. Yep, they'll be printing in midair. Now after the print is done and we take it off the bed, we're going to use a knife to carefully cut the outside of the hair away from the outside shell. This will take a little while and you'll probably have a few hairs falling off in the process, but that's okay. Don't sweat it. Now that the line is free from the shell, it's time for the fun part. Let's get a blow dryer and start grooming his hair into place. It really doesn't take long with a hair dryer and before long you'll get his hair groomed into place just how you want it. You may not realize it, but living hinges are all around us. 
You can see an example here with this toothpaste cap, or another one here with this contact solution lid. But did you know we can make living hinges like this with 3D printing? Here's an example of a Nintendo Switch game case holder that uses a living hinge. The living hinge for this part is just the PLA plastic material printed just two layers thick. If you want to 3D print this game case for yourself, you can find the part link in the description down below. Here's another example of a living hinge I made here with this small crystal container. This living hinge is very small and neatly hidden, but because of that, it'll have more stress going through it. This living hinge is more likely to break over time, but even so, I've cycled this box more than 50 times with no issue. Today we're going to look at a new type of printing mode called wire printing mode. As it suggests, this can print out a wire mesh frame of a model you want. So to find this printing mode, we're going to go in the settings in Kira. Then we will search for wire printing and check that setting. Now with the setting selected, we can slice the model. And unfortunately, we're not able to see the print preview here, which is a big challenge because we're not able to foresee any issues. So we'll have to take this with a leap of faith. Now this Ditto model is fairly simple. It turned out pretty well and printed in just 33 minutes, although it is extremely fragile. I tried to print another skull model, which is a bit more complicated and definitely had some challenges and didn't really turn out that well, as you can see here. So from my experience, this wire printing isn't really useful for any functional models, but you can make some pretty cool artistic looking models and you can print them pretty fast. Like and subscribe for more.